Obadiah Obi Toppin. His explosiveness, post-game passing, and shooting ability translates to high-level scoring in this league. His work ethic has been unquestioned by coaches and teammates, while his potential for more continues to be discussed by scouts, GMs, and media around the league. His NBA comparisons have been numerous, from Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, Kenyon Martin, Tobias Harris, but Obi Toppin has been able to display flashes of who he is since backing up current star power forward for the New York Knicks, Julius Randle. But fear not, Knicks fans. Obi Toppin's time to shine is imminent. He is the next man up. Today, we discuss the New York Knicks and how they've brought Obi Toppin along perfectly. Friend or foe, we want the smoke. And the smoke is exactly what we're bringing to you today, courtesy of OB Toppin and the New York Knicks. Wake up and let's go. Most professional, unselfish, toughest, nastiest, dislike team in the NBA. We didn't care about it. That was our identity, and that's who we were. What's up, Knicks Nation, and welcome back to the Sheer Brilliance Knicks. My name is Sheer, and today I want to cover the next man up at the power forward position for our New York Knicks, Obadiah Obi. Topic. But first, I want to thank you for watching the video. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If you are here for the first time, I welcome you. If you are returning, my SBC, my Sheer Brilliance community, welcome back. Let's go. And if you're the ops, see you too but well, welcome to the channel this content is for you and anyone else who is a fan of basketball friend or foe we want the smoke and you already know that so let's dive right in Obi Toppin was drafted eighth overall to the New York Knicks that year and it was a surprise that he dropped to us the need was a serviceable point guard but the draft can be a crapshoot and anyone can fall during any particular draft Julius Randle, he was coming off of a down year that year, his first season in New York. Now, Obi Toppin unexpectedly fell to us, to New York Knicks in that draft. And it so happened that Obi was a homegrown player. Obi was also National Player of the Year. But he was also the possible replacement for Julius Randle. There were ties to Obi. Leon Rose was his agent. And even current assistant Rick Brunson, although he wasn't a coach at that time, he has a history of training Obi. All right. The next thing was it was unexpected. The second year, the year that Obi was drafted, Julius Randle's contract year, he excelled. New York goes into the season with a roster filled with seasoned veterans as well. And Julius Randle would blast out that year, having an MIP and all-star level contact year season. Obi is allowed to learn and come along slowly without New York pressure to perform that year. Hell, the young players and veterans recent to New York, they all received experience in the playoffs that year, experience winning in New York. And New York makes the playoffs for the first time in years. Obi Toppin doesn't get too many minutes, and he also struggles a little bit with his outside shooting, foul trouble, and his defense. But what Obi does show is flashes of potential, and making that playoff run provided valuable experience for the team as a whole. 
More important, he witnessed the grind of Julius Randle. The results that season, the New York hype that comes with it, he also saw the crash that may come with the pressure of expectations. The expectations to win in a city deprived of success for so long. More important is that Obi had the opportunity to battle and practice, to learn from and to see the work ethic of a player who is rewarded with those accolades. Super important factor. So that brings me to this. We all look at this positional threat, Obi versus Julius. But before that, what is unspoken in all of this is Julius Randle's embracing the young power forward and teaching him the ropes. It is no secret that the New York Knicks' decision to draft Obi Toppin, an athletic, versatile power forward center in today's NBA, had a high floor and NBA-ready prospects. What they currently had was a talented scorer, yet a seemingly overwhelmed and frustrated player in Julius Randle, who had been unable to adjust to the pressure of a huge contract and the lofty expectations of a New York Knicks fan base. You never know how someone is going to react when a new guy is brought in to replace you. That can be the case with professional sports. It can be the case with real life. Now, reminiscent of, of, of this positional battle, I'm going to give you guys a flashback to a positional threat. Carmelo Anthony, when Chris Stapps arrived. We've experienced it in another situation. When we drafted Chris Stapps Porzingis to play alongside Carmelo Anthony, the rumors quickly swirled that Melo wasn't pleased with the pick. The article read, shortly after the draft Thursday night, Anthony expressed displeasure about Phil Jackson's decision to draft Porzingis in a phone conversation with ex-Nick Tim Hardaway Jr. And that was reported by ESPN. When the perception became that Carmelo was possibly feeling threatened by Chris Stapps and his abilities or, or his potential as the next star, Carmelo quickly moved to embrace Chris Stapps, and he will pub publicly say he's going to take Porzingis under his wing. Now, Porzingis is green. I mean, he, he's, he's new. He's a rookie. So this was easy for him to believe as Chris Stapps even grew up idolizing Carmelo Anthony. He was honored to play with Carmelo and, and have Carmelo as his vet. It was even discovered that Chris Stapps wore cornrows, the hairstyle. As a youth, with the Den when, when Carmelo was a Denver Nugget, he had the same headband color because he was inspired by Carmelo Anthony. So this newfound connection indeed became mentor and mentee, that type of relationship, for better or for worse. The New York Knicks at that time, they were a drama-filled laughing stock of the NBA. Phil Jackson, who was the team president, he was sending messages through the media to the players. He had planted rumors through Charlie Rosen, a close friend and author, and usurped a respected head coach in Mike Woodson, who ran a system that previously experienced success. And he replaced him with a rookie head coach in Derek Fisher, who was charged with implementing a triangle offense that Phil Jackson had legendarily succeeded with in the 1990s. Now, this, was, 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 this wasn't so popular. This system had intricate detail and was deemed outdated by many. It was also the cause for dissension between many of the organization players and the coach. So ironically, Kristaps Porzingis was found speaking highly of the offense one time in a year after a Knicks victory. He said it resembled certain sets and stereotypes uh, and cer certain sets and styles that he had experienced in Europe. Shortly thereafter, it was reported that Carmelo Anthony had tore into Chris Stapps, reprimanding him for speaking positively about the triangle offense. To me, this was the first sign of a negative, even manipulative influence that a star such as Carmelo could have over a rookie player like Chris Stapps. Now, I want to fast forward back and his trade demand, Dallas, game over. Now, the question is, will history repeat itself? Because that was a toxic culture. The difference is the character of Obi Toppin. Now I say don't be distracted away. He's not distracted away from his work. 
He continues to try to be efficient and make improvements. All right? Now, I say this to people all the time. When we look at this Julius and this Obi relationship and this tandem, I really appreciate the professionalism that Obi has brought, uh, the professionalism that Julius has brought in the time that Obi has been in the league. No matter what ups and downs Julius has experienced, Obi Toppin has kept that open energy and that feeling of he knows that there's a lot to learn from Julius. And to Julius's credit, he's reciprocated that energy. The only time it seemed to be called into question is when the crowd began chanting Obi's name. And that was the only time that there was a kink in the armor, you know, um, of Julius and, and his embracing of the young power forward. You know, because it seemed as if he was a little bit jealous that the crowd was chanting Obi's name when he was really putting his heart and soul out there on the floor as well. What he failed to remember is that the crowd, when you're doing well, the crowd will chant your name. And they were chanting MVP for for Julius when Julius had that MIP season. So you don't necessarily have to be truly a candidate for the award, but the fans will show you love. And that love has to be spread if a, if a teammate is doing well. You can't always harbor all of the accolades. So anytime his body language would shift when we would hear chance for Obi, that will call into some question, you know, are you willing to let the young guy shine? More recently, after a recent victory uh, that the New York Knicks experienced this season, there, there was a lot of talk by the New York fan base of little moments here and there where Julius Randle's body language was becoming questionable. It almost seems as if, uh, he, he doesn't want to be there or he's not part of the team or he's leaving the floor a little bit early. Now, many of us question, are we doing too much? And nine times out of ten, we are probably doing too much because Julius has been sick over the last few days. And why stay around high-fiving and showing great sportsmanship to the other team when you're possibly spreading germs or congratulating your teammates when, once again, you're probably spreading germs? But there is a history with Julius, and you can only go on the history of a person. You are what you repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not a single act. It's a habit, and the same thing applies for bad habits. It's not a single act. It's what you repeatedly do that helps us determine if that's genuinely you or not. Okay? But what I will say is this. The team is beginning to develop an identity. It's close to 20 games in, and what we're starting to see is whether or not there are pieces in this group that needs to be moved so that other pieces can have an opportunity to show what they're truly capable of doing with more minutes. The team is currently constituted doesn't seem to be taking the next step. So it is my belief that this early part of the season was an opportunity to assess the personnel that we have on the floor, the opportunity to assess the young players, and if given additional minutes, what they're capable of doing, but also the opportunity to see if there are uh, combinations that work or if this a duplication of players and abilities and who needs to be moved. We're coming up on a trade deadline, which is usually around, uh, I think, opens up de December 1st and ends in February. So it's a time where the team, I truly believe, is looking to see what players are able to be moved and who we will be moving forward with for the future. Obi Toppin is the next man up. Julius Randle is a phenomenal player. Phenomenal player. 
but he's not a part of the New York Knicks' future. Obi Toppin is a tremendous piece to what it is that the New York Knicks intend to build. Unless there is an outstanding free agent that becomes available who plays the power forward position, the style of play that the New York Knicks would like to play, and his athleticism and his ability to score in bunches when he's out and running, that is exactly what the New York Knicks are looking to have at the power forward position that matches this style of play currently played in the NBA. Obi Toppin is that guy. For me, I also think when you're looking at who leaves and you look at the entire roster of the New York Knicks, there is a special connection with Obi Toppin and Emmanuel Quickly. They came in together in the same draft. They're like freaking frack. You've seen that they support each other through the ups and downs. You also see that they train and push each other to be the best that they can be. And once they got drafted, we heard that they were able to put in a phone call to each other. And they said, hey, you ready to help turn this thing around? So they made a pact not to run from this challenge, but together to contribute to helping the New York Knicks become a winning organization. In my opinion, we're not going to get there unless, unless one of them is moved. And that guy... Recently, his name has risen up in trade rumors, Emmanuel Quickly. And the ask for Emmanuel Quickly is no less than a first-round pick, as it should be. But I think in order for Obi to truly take that next step, you got to break up the two. I'm not saying Emmanuel Quickly is responsible for the stunted growth of Obi Toppin, but what I think is going to happen is going to be a similar effect of DeMar DeRozan and Cal Lowry in Toronto. Ultimately, the GM and the president decided that a move needed to be made. He was in a position to make a huge move for Kawhi Leonard, so that is obviously more justified. DeMar DeRozan and both, and both DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry were way more advanced in terms of their talent production then Emmanuel quickly, but basically that relationship is the same where it was two best friends who were split up. They were so accustomed to really putting their heart and soul on the floor to the Toronto Raptors. And I think the same thing applies, although these two players are still young, but I think the moment that you trade Emmanuel quickly, Emmanuel quickly will be in a better position to get higher minutes and be successful. And I think Obi Toppin will really take advantage of understanding that this is a, a, a business and that he has an opportunity to play a major role and that he has to lock in and focus because his role will then change. And I, I think that will be the start of something special. The New York Knicks already started by getting a great piece in, in Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson has been as advertised. He's been a point guard with the ability to distribute the ball, but he's been a point guard who has had the ability to put up numbers at the point guard position. He wasn't, he, he's not an answer, he's a piece. And all we need are two more players. So whether or not Brunson is a second fiddle or a third fiddle, it's one thing. What RJ becomes is another. But a major piece to what it is that we do in terms of our success in terms of winning and building this franchise up, is going to depend on Obadiah Toppin. So with that being said, Obi Toppin is the next man up. If you like this video, please click the like button. Subscribe to the video. Hit notifications because more videos and assessments and evaluations will be coming. But keep this in mind. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. And we are here. And we got next. Sheer Brilliance Knicks. Thank you for watching.